Bumbrough, which I would like to mention, is directly acting vasodilators. Basically, they can be two type of uh, dilators. They can be a group which dilates arteries as well as veins, and the other group can be which dilates only your arteries. Classical example of this group of drugs is nitroprusol. And here is hydralazine or bisoxide. First, let's talk about the mechanism of action of nitroprusside. Uh, before that, you should uh, recall the normal contraction of smooth muscles. Uh, basically, calcium influx either from the endoplasmic reticulum or from calcium channels. First of all, leads to influx of calcium which binds with calmodulin. The calcium and calmodulin complex activates light chain kinases. Light chain kinases. Like all other kinases, kinases are a group of enzymes which actually act phosphate group to its substrate. And some of the substances when they are phosphorylated they are activated and some of the substances are inactivated when they are phosphorylated. So light chain kinases uh, leads to phosphorylation of myosin light chain. When myosin light chains are phosphorylated, they can now interact with actin and uh, uh, this complex then leads to contraction. What happens when we use nitroprusside? When nitroprusside enters the smooth muscle cell, it leads to release of nitric oxide. Nitric oxide actually uh, activates GTP. It actually activates guanylyl cyclase, sorry. It activates guanylyl cyclase. Guanylyl cyclase converts GTP into cyclic GMP. And when guanylyl cyclase is increased, cyclic GMP is increased. Cyclic GMP activates protein kinase G. So now from here, nitroprusside act acted upon the cell. It released nitric oxide. It acted upon guanylyl cyclase. It increased cyclic GMP. Cyclic GMP increased or activated protein kinase G. Protein kinase G actually phosphorylates this light chain kinase and when this light chain kinase is phosphorylated it becomes inactive when it becomes inactive there is no uh, exposure of phosphorylated myosin light chains with actin and there is no contraction this leads to uh, veno dilation veno and arteriolar dilation since nitroprusside is both veno as well as arteriolar dilator and when arteries are dilated total peripheral resistance is reduced and diastolic blood pressure is reduced and when veins are dilated, venous return is reduced and systolic blood pressure is reduced. So this was for mechanism of action of nitroprusside. Next we can discuss disoxide. Disoxide is only an arteriolar dilator. It acts on the smooth muscles of arteries only. Actually what it does is it increases the efflux of potassium from the cell. Means potassium loss from the cell is increased which leads to hyperpolarization. Like if this is the potential, this is the threshold potential, this is the resting membrane potential of smooth muscle cell. When there is potassium efflux, means there is cationic loss, so this leads to hyperpolarization. The potential which was required initially was this, and now after hyperpolarization, maybe uh, the potential required is even more to reach to uh, threshold, and thus it leads to decrease action potential when you use disoxide. It leads to arteriolar dilation, decrease total peripheral resistance and decrease diastolic blood pressure.